Hi, hello. Uh, so I'm going to talk about, uh, well, generalized mental reg uh, for MLIR and also how to use it. Uh, this is work that I've done during an internship uh, at Next Silicon uh, this year. And uh, I'm going to talk about this. So first of all, before we get into, into MLIR specifically, uh, maybe uh, some people are not aware of what Memtureg is, so I'm going to explain it a bit. Uh, so Memtureg, that's how it's called in LLVM, and it's also known as SSA construction. And basically it's the uh, transformation that takes um, a program that stores values uh, in memory uh, in a non-SSA way and turn it into uh, turn those uh, memory locations into SSA values. But of course, uh, when those uh, memory locations are tractable, uh, so uh, they can be turned into it. So in LLVM, in practice, uh, it's really just about converting um, alloca on the stack into SSA values. Um, so let's look at how this is done with this uh, example. So we've got an, an alloca X, which is like a pointer to some value that is allocated on the stack. Uh, and then we have multiple operations that store to it and some that load from it as well. And so the point of Memtureg is to turn those loads and stores uh, into just direct uses of uh, SSA variables. So in some cases, like this case, for instance, uh, it's quite straightforward to know which, uh, which value, uh, what the value of A will be. And it will be C0 because it's the only uh, store that reaches this point. But in other cases, it's a little bit more uh, it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily as clear because here we have an example where it could be either C1 or C2, depending on which branch you're coming from. And so uh, Memtureg, like the, the Memtureg algorithm, has to clarify this before it can do any transformation. So let's, let's look at how it does this. Uh, what, what you can do is, like, what it does is you take all the um, stores that happen to a given value and then you apply data flow analysis, uh, which is called iterated dominance frontier, which allows you to basically find all the places where the store, the, the stores, the definition of the value of X are, um, are clashing. So here there's only one, it's here because there's the C1 and C2 definitions that are clashing. And so the mental algorithm will uh, try to um, uh, clarify which, uh, what, what the exact value uh, at each point, at each block is for X. And so to do this here when there's a clash, we just basically add a block argument. And this is the uh, SSA construction part of it. Uh, and so now we will just assume that, well, at this block, the value of, uh, of uh, the content of X is V. And so with this, we have clarified basically every single point at the entry and the exit of each block. So we can start replacing values. Uh, if we look at, um, the, at A, for example, we can replace it by C0 because that's the value of X at that point. If we look at B, we can replace it with V because it's the value of X at that point. And then finally, uh, we need to, of course, wire the, the value into V. So uh, using, again, the, the definition at, each, uh, at the exit of previous blocks. So that's, and so if I remove all the all the things that are no longer necessary. This is quite a nice simplification from the initial program, and we don't use memory uh, anymore, so that's pretty good. So one of the reasons to use mem2reg is, first of all, to write programs without caring about SSA. Uh, developers of um, compiler frontends maybe do not want to care about SSA as much. And so the mem2reg is really nice because you can just uh, write programs, like you can turn your local variables into something that uses the stack, and then uh, have mem2reg take care of turning it into SSA. Now, you can, it also helps removing costly memory usages, of course, as, as we just saw, and it also simplifies the program structure, uh, because here, in the example I gave, for example, one of the branches is no longer used. So that, that's, that's uh, Memtreg is quite useful in general. Uh, so how is, it, how is it in MLIR? Well, <laughs> uh, there is uh, no standard interfaces, there is no standard implementation. So typically, uh, if you want to use Memtreg, you have to implement it yourself, you have to do it downstream. And there is no coordination between uh, implementations. And that's actually a, a sad property, because uh, let's look at this example. For example, we have uh, memref here. So we, we, memref is the dialect to represent um, a reference, to, reference to memory, which is basically the same as what we saw earlier. And so here, uh, if memref, let's imagine memref would provide a mem to reg implementation, well, here clearly, this is just a store of a constant and then a load of that constant. So they could 
reduce it very simply into just returning that constant. So that's very nice. Um, uh, it works, OK. But now let's imagine I'm like a downstream user, uh, and I create a custom dialect, that, like, like a sidecar dialect for memref that, that declares uh, atomic stores. Let's say we want to have atomic memory stores. Well, suddenly, the provided implementation doesn't work because it doesn't know what atomic stores are. It's never seen them before in its life. So that's unfortunate. Of course, MLIR provides a great solution for this, which are interfaces. You can specify uh, for each operation of a dialect uh, how they behave uh, uh, related to some um, property that, that's of interest to you. And you don't have to define a list in advance. So that's perfect in this case. OK, then. What we need to decide is how to encode memtorex semantics in interfaces. So what is a good memory location? Like a, a good um, a location that, by good, I mean a location that behaves in a way that's tractable for memtoreg. And I say memory in quotes because it's memory really in a very general sense. Uh, when you think of memory, you think of uh, random access memory. But it can be really anything that has like load and store semantics. So a good memory location, well, it contains, for, for mem egg it contains a single value, because an SSF value contains, well, a single value. The type of that location is consistent, as in like the um, location is being fetched uh, using the same type every time, because an SSF value has a consistent type as well. Uh, the uses of the location must not escape a given scope, because uh, if it, we need to be able to uh, tracked the, 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 the content of the, of the value, and also it must not alias for the same reason, because we need to actually track the, the content. And finally, which it's a little bit of a tricky property, but you would like your location to be considered in a void. Uh, if you imagine C-like semantics, for example, you could create a local variable, and take a pointer to it, and then do pointer arithmetics on it, and start pointing to things that are completely unrelated to the alloca. But if you turn that location into um, an SSA value, well, you cannot do this anymore because SSA values are considered in a void. So this is, this is a property your location must have as well. So how do we, how do we model that? Well, we could have something to model uh, memory locations uh, with a given type in particular. So uh, the memory slot structure is, um, is, uh, the, can represent this. So you have a pointer to the value, that you're, to the memory location that you're trying to model. And then you have a type. It's the type that you expect it to be used as. So uh, now, the only thing you need to check is that it co does contain a single value and it does not alias. And also that the pointer, uh, and it doesn't escape as well, and also that the pointer uh, is used to look up the value in a consistent way. So in other words, this is like we have three main steps before we run mem 2 So we, can, we need to detect where allocations of memory slots are, are, are performed. Then we need to check that all those memory slots are used uh, in the way, in the good way that we want. And then finally, we need to uh, understand the memory slot, the content of the memory slot to actually run the algorithm I described earlier. So let's look at the first step. We are going to, to do that, we're going to implement it on the example I just gave. So uh, this is the example I just gave. I just added a little new instruction, which is a metadata instruction. It's, um, it does not really look at the content of the memory, but it encodes information uh, on the pointer itself. It's for the sake of the example. So where are we creating memory slots? Well, we're creating memory slots in Alloca, so we need to have a way for Alloca to specify the memory slots it's going to create. For this, we have an interface. It's promotable location op interface. And it has two methods, the get promotable slots, which uh, returns the memory slots that could potentially be promoted. It doesn't mean that they are used properly, that they are good, but it, uh, it represents the slots that we're interested in. And then we have the get default value, which basically help, represents uh, what you would get. It returns what you would get if you were to load the value uh, without, storing it to, without, without sort of storing to it before. So for, our, for memory to alloc, what it would return is basically uh, the pointer and then the type that we want. So here for our memref, it's i32. So that's the type we expect the memref to be used as. OK, so that's good. Uh, then we need a way to, to, to um, check that the memory slot is used properly. So to do this, uh, so we have like uh, multiple uses of the alloca. And I call them blocking, blocking uses because uh, 
what we're trying to do is eliminate those uses to replace them with direct SSA, um, uh, SSA operations so we can like, get rid of the memory uh, operations entirely. And so the purpose of this is going to like, find a way to detect that the uses are good in the sense that I defined before and that they um, and that and, and a way to actually get rid of them. So let's look at the easiest one. It's the easiest because it doesn't really touch memory. It's just here for decoration. So uh, for this, we have the promotable op interface, which defines two important methods. The first one, uh, well, we return whether or not the use can uh, a set of uses can be removed from that operation. Uh, and then the second method uh, specifies how to uh, remove it once uh, the mem reg analysis is complete. So in, in this case, well, we can always remove it. It's a metadata information that, can, that should be removed if it prevents uh, optimization. And then how to remove it? We can just remove the metadata operation by returning deletion can delete. So that's, that's, first, that's fairly easy. But if you look at can uses be removed, uh, one interesting uh, argument is new blocking uses um, it's, um, it, this allows you to add new blocking uses that, um, that you want to be uh, removed uh, to effectively perform promotion. This is typically if your metadata, for example, uh, is used by other operations that should also be taken care of. Uh, so that's good, we've taken care of metadata, but now for the actual important part, of course, it's uh, how to take care of the store and load operations that do touch memory. For this, we have a slightly different interface, which is promotable memory op interface, or mem op interface. Uh, the differences are, are not, it, it's not very different, but it does have a few uh, additional arguments. So for starters, it, can, it knows about the slot you're trying to use. This is useful in cases where you have like, uh, uh, operations that could potentially store the memory location pointer into the memory location itself, uh, like in LRVM, you can do that. Uh, and this would, of course, prevent, uh, prevent promotion because we, we would eliminate the pointer in the end. So this is useful for this sort of check. And naturally, uh, you also have the reaching definition. So assume, assuming memtring analysis is complete, you obtain uh, with this interface uh, the value reached by, um, by uh, the, 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 the location. It's useful to rewire load operations, for example. So here we're talking about the atomic memref A store, which is completely unrelated to mem to ref, uh, to memref, sorry. Uh, can it be removed? Yes, as long as the types are consistent, which is one of the properties of memory locations we wanted. And how to remove it? Well, it's just a store, so we can just really delete it because we already uh, considered that uh, it's a store. We already have analyzed this at this point, so we can just delete it. And then we implement it for loads as well. So it's roughly the same, but when we remove it, uh, what's important is to uh, return uh, to replace the uses using, that's where reaching definition, uh, reaching definition comes into play. So that's very nice. Uh, okay, so that's the second step. We have specified how to um, detect that the uses are reasonable and how to uh, get rid of them. And then finally, we need to uh, provide the information for the analysis, uh, the core information. And it's really not very complicated, right? Uh, the only things that need to touch uh, memory uh, our store and load, so we can just add it to the uh, promotable memo interface. And all we need to tell it really is that whether or not a given operation loads from a given slot, stores to a given slot, and if it does store to a given slot, uh, we need to tell it how to, uh, what, ex what values it stores so it can be used as reaching definition for further operations. So that's very nice. And then from this, once we have implemented all of that, we can just apply the mem to reg rewrite pattern and get mem to reg on, on our dialect. And if you notice, these interfaces and the implementation of those interfaces do not really, uh, they, they have nothing, um, they do not depend on each other. So it doesn't matter if your dialect, if your operation comes from one dialect or another. So we solved the, co the coordination issues we had. So um, to summarize, we have interfaces to define how operations interact with mem to reg. Uh, we have an upstream rewrite pattern or pass, if you prefer this sort of stuff, to apply the transformation. And thanks to it, you have out-of-the-box coordination between your dialects. So that's quite useful. There's also a bit more than that. Uh, for out of this interface, uh, you can also have basic SROA. So SROA um, is, uh, takes aggregate types 
aggregate like type like structs or arrays and it turns them into uh, separate fields. Uh, this is useful because then you can remove, for example, unused uh, fields. Uh, this is achieved by breaking allocators of large memory slots, so aggregate memory slots, uh, into single allocators of their fields. So this is done by implementing the destructurable uh, allocation op interface on your allocators. Then you've got the safe memory slot access op interface. It's quite a mouthful, uh, but it allows you to uh, prove and specify that your, um, the operation that will access your memory slot do it in a safe way, as in you, you do consider your sub slots and your large slots in a void, and you do not overlap. And then finally, the destructurable access op interface, which is uh, similar to the uh, promotable mail op interface that actually does the, um, the separation. So that's very nice. Uh, we can talk about what's upstream. Uh, we have support for in the LLVM dialect currently for those interfaces, so for allocate stack slots uh, in a similar manner than in LLVM. So we support debug info and markers in, in the LLVM dialect. There is also support for memory intri intrinsics like um, memcopy and memset. And of course, you have also basic SRA on structs and arrays. Uh, uh, yes, you, you, you have that. And in, on the memref dialect, uh, you have uh, support for memtreg of scalar memrefs. You don't have support for I hold a memref. Uh, and there is basic SRA for higher uh, rank memref uh, to basically turn them into scalar memrefs and then mem memtreg that. So it's, it's mostly useful for um, um, mem mem memref that are not like huge tensors. Uh, there, of course, there is still lots of, lots of things to be done. Uh, uh, as you maybe have seen in the dominance talk, there is more interfaces I needed to support structured control flow. Uh, we, we can't just do it like this. Um, currently, uh, this, only works on, so this only works on unstructured control flow, and the terminators may, must be branch-like control flow because it's the only way to, the, to propagate um, the definitions through through edges of the control flow graph. So uh, again, this this could maybe be in, uh, improved. And of course, they need more public support uh, for the open dialects and upstream dialects that that need it. Uh, such as, for example, the memref dialect could probably uh, maybe support uh, memtreg for higher rank higher uh, rank memrefs. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And uh, in any case, uh, thank you for listening. Plenty of time for questions. All right, so I want something in between what you've described. I would like to keep my aggregates in my alicas, but I still want to convert them out of alica form. So how do I do that? Uh, you, you just need to not run SOA, basically. <laughs> so you, what you can do is implement, implement the uh, interfaces on your allocators um, so they work on your aggregates. Uh, so they just perform memtreg. And simply, in, if you want to keep the aggregates as is, you just don't run SROA. It's a separate pass, a separate rewrite pattern. So, so you are handling the per field writes if, if I don't do SROA? If you, if you don't run SROA, you have your aggregate, and you run memtreg on that, and it's just it, your aggregate is put inside SSA values. If you run SROA, your allocators are first broken into little pieces, and then you run memtreg on each field individually. Sure. So if you don't want to have the, the separation uh, of fields, you can just run memtreg directly without running SROA. Okay. Does that or, answer or let, let me ask the question a different way. Um, if I don't run SROA, are, am I limited to whole aggregate writes that get converted, or does it handle per field? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's the case. Yes, to which part? This is a limitation. Okay. You, you cannot you cannot um, do memtreg partially if you don't break them first. Okay. Thanks. Anyone? Anyone else? If not, then please thank Theo one more time. Mm -hmm.